Since Apple has cut back on the number of ports in their MacBooks over the years, I've been looking for the ultimate USB hub to connect all my external devices and storage. Over the past few years, I've used a range of smaller USB hubs, including ones with integrated storage. And I've even gotten to the point of daisy chaining hubs together because I've just maxed out the ports. So today I'm reviewing a device that promises to solve all of my USB port woes and more. This is the Ivanki Fusion Dock Max one. And today we're going to find out if it's actually the best docking station for Macs currently available. So let's start out by talking about the features of the Fusion Dock Max. And just for context, this hub comes in at around 439 US dollars. So I'd say it's pretty competitively priced. There are other docks out there that have similar specs that are around the same price point. But this particular dock has a whopping 20 ports, which is pretty impressive. On the back of the dock, it has two upstream Thunderbolt 4 ports to connect to your Mac. And this includes a 96 watt delivery. So if you use a MacBook Pro like I do, you're not gonna have any problems charging. Then it's got two downstream Thunderbolt 4 ports, three USB-A 3.2 ports. So these can all run up to 10 gigabits per second. There's two HDMI 2.0 ports, a two and a half gigabit per second ethernet port, a 3.5 millimeter audio port. And lastly, there's an optical audio port, which is really nice to see in case you wanna add a more advanced audio setup. And this is all powered by a pretty beefy sized 180 watt power brick. Now on the front of the Fusion Dock Max, you've got two more Thunderbolt 4 downstream ports and then two USB-C 3.2 ports, including one with a 30 watt power delivery, which is a nice touch. You've got another couple USB-A 3.2 ports for more connection options. There's another 3.5 millimeter jack. And then lastly, you've got an SD and a TF card reader, which is really handy. Now the reason for those two upstream Thunderbolt 4 ports in the back of the dock is because because internally it has two Thunderbolt 4 chips, which means that the dock utilizes two of your Thunderbolt ports on your Mac to utilize as much bandwidth as possible. This also means that this dock is actually only supported by Apple Silicon Macs. It doesn't support Intel based Macs and it doesn't support PCs. Now, one of the main selling points is the fact that it can support up to four displays at once, which is actually pretty impressive. However, I haven't actually been able to utilize this and that's because I've got an M1 Pro chip in my MacBook Pro and this can only support up to two displays. It's actually an Apple Silicon restriction with the only Apple chips that are able to support up to four displays being the M Max chips. So if you do have one of those computers, you will be able to utilize the full four display options. So as you can see, this is actually a pretty serious USB hub. And according to these specs, it should be able to handle quite a lot of data and connected devices all at once. But are these specs alone enough to make it a good USB hub? So to answer that question, let's talk about the next thing, which is the design and the build quality. Now, right out the gate, overall, I've been really impressed with both the design and the build quality of the Fusion Dock Max 1. I personally think the design actually looks really nice. It's got kind of a space gray, maybe a slightly blue color to it, which definitely feels reminiscent of a variation of the classic Apple space gray color. The whole thing is made of high quality metal and feels really solid and quite beefy. You can mount it vertically or horizontally using the included anti-skid pads, which I'm actually a really big fan of. I definitely like the option to be able to mount it whichever way suits my desk setup the best. For me personally, I like having it mounted vertically. So that's how I've got it currently. It's also got this kind of floating design. So the main part of the hub is separate to what you could essentially consider the stand of the hub. And the idea behind this is to help keep it cooler, which I think does make sense because you're not having so much surface area contact with your desk. And the dock does heat up quite a bit when it's actually in use. Plus, I actually kind of think this floating design looks kind of cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. And lastly, I think the size is actually really good. It's not too big, it's not too small, and it doesn't overpower my desk, which is quite nice. And then again, in terms of build quality, I've really got no complaints. Like I said, it's made of really solid metal. The cable feels like it's really high quality, and it's basically what you would expect at this price point. So no complaints there. Now, moving on to my actual experience using this hub on a day-to-day -day basis. So really the big question for me, first of all, was, was there enough ports for me? And the short answer is yes. I found now that I'm using this hub, I always have the third Thunderbolt port on my Mac free, which is really nice. Although I do still have one of those small USB hubs connected to the Fusion Dock, and that's because I've got it mounted underneath my desk with some drives attached to it. So it's just kind of nice having less clutter connected to the device and more hidden away under my desk. But I actually did run out of USB-C ports, mainly because all of my external devices and drives use USB-C now, which makes sense, but it meant that I had spare USB-A ports, but no spare USB-C ports. So the workaround for me was just to 
switch over some of those USB-C ports back to USB-A. As long as they were rated for 10 gigabits per second, it was not a problem. And I was also trying to maximize the amount of ports I was using on the back of the dock so that they were kind of hidden and there was less clutter on my desk. I try to avoid having cables coming out the front of the hub if possible, just because I think it looks a bit neater. Now, in terms of the overall performance of the hub, I've really got no major complaints, although there were a couple of small things, which I'll talk about soon. First of all, I was able to get full speed out of all my connected hard drives, which includes an older hard disk drive, a standard SSD, and then two NVMe drives, one of which is rated for 40 gigabits per second, which I use to edit my videos from. And I found I was able to get full speed from this drive via the dock, which is really nice to see. And I also simultaneously edit essentially from all four of these drives, often in one project. And I found I've had no issues running that through this hub as well. The SD and TF card slots in the front have come in really handy and they're also a decent speed. The 30 watt USB-C port has also come in really handy and I often will charge my phone using this port. Now, when it comes to displays, I haven't tested it with multiple ones since, like I said, my M1 Pro is limited to two displays and I also only just use my single 38 inch ultra wide. But I've had absolutely no problems connecting my display with this hub and I'm able to max out my resolution and the refresh rate of 144 hertz. The 96 watt power delivery to my Mac is also really nice, meaning it has no problems charging my Mac even while I'm doing intensive tasks. So overall, the performance of this hub to me has been pretty excellent. However, like I mentioned, there were a couple of small issues, which I just wanted to point out. So the first thing was that within the first month or so of using it, I noticed periodically there'd be this really high pitched ringing sound coming from the hub. And it was only just audible, but it was audible enough to be kind of annoying. I found actually powering off the device was the only thing that would stop it. However, since then, it's been a bit intermittent. I haven't heard it for about a month now, I think. So maybe it's gone, but I have seen other people online complain about a similar issue. So this could just be specific to individual models and you might be able to return it and get one that doesn't do that. But it's just something to keep in mind. And then the second thing is that occasionally I've had instances where devices haven't connected to the hub. And I don't really have an explanation for this one. This happened to me more commonly with the front USB-C ports where devices just haven't seemed to register. But then when I've plugged them into my spare Thunderbolt port on my Mac, they've connected fine. Again, it's been intermittent, so it doesn't happen all the time, just every now and then. So it's kind of annoying, but not a major problem. Although I have recently noticed it happened once with the SD card readers as well, which has been a bit more frustrating. Again, I'm not sure if this is just because I've got a faulty unit or if this is a broader problem. So check out the reviews from other people, see if they've got a similar issue. But again, worth keeping in mind. So last but not least, overall, do I think this hub is worth picking up? And I've kind of got a few different angles on this. So first of all, the main competitor for me, from what I've seen, is the CalDigit TS4, which is essentially kind of my benchmark for these types of hubs. I've had my eye on the CalDigit for actually probably a couple of years now. So I'd be really interested to hear from anyone else who might have that device and how they think the iBanky stacks up against it. But the CalDigit is slightly cheaper, but it has two less ports and it only supports up to two displays instead of the four like the iBanky does. So I think if you're a Mac user with more than two displays that you want to connect, then the iMakey seems like the logical choice because it's the only one that I'm aware of that actually supports more than two at the moment. However, if you're a Mac user that wants the option of compatibility with PCs, then this device probably won't be for you because like I said, it only supports Apple Silicon Macs. Apart from that, I think the CalDigit and the iVanky have pretty similar ports, although the CalDigit has a display port instead of the iVanky's two HDMI ports. So it might end up coming down to which design you like better, which particular combination of ports suits you best, and whether or not obviously you have Apple Silicon. But overall, I personally definitely think it's a solid unit and worth picking up. I think it just comes down to your particular use case and your taste at the end of the day. There's a link to the hub down below if you want to check it out. And if you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts on what it's like to use an ultra wide monitor, maybe you're looking at buying one, then check out this video here where I share my thoughts on using an ultra wide for a year.